Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today I'm going to teach you how to actually take proper photos of your minis that'll have them looking good and actually like how you painted them. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vincey V. Let us get to the technique and learn it. So I review a lot of photos of minis. Whether that's on the Patreon, which hey, you can find the link for that down below. There's a review and feedback tier in there that helps you get feedback on your current project and it takes you, helps you take your step, your next step in your hobby journey. But whether reviewing through that, through judging competitions, or through the old PMP for years, I have looked at quite literally tens of thousands of photos of minis and had to judge them and give feedback on them. And the number one thing that stands in my way with that is usually just the quality of the photo. So today I wanted to teach you how to take better pictures of your minis. Now a long time ago I had done a video on this, but frankly I didn't like a lot of what was in there and I still wasn't happy with my photos at that time. Now after years of basically having information, uh, I guess, force-fed to me by others, I finally, I think, learned enough to help you take some good photos. So let's start with the basics. Let's start with what you shouldn't do. All right, so first, the don'ts. Most of us probably have a painting light setup on our desk. You can see mine behind me here. And the painting lights are great. You want a nice, bright light for painting, something around the 4500 to 5500 K, uh, area, very bright. Uh, you want it to make sure that basically when you're painting, the area is just flooded with that nice, even colored daylight type light. And that makes, your, it makes it easier on your eyes, it makes it easier to see the detail, let you render the colors in a more true way. So basically it just makes you a better painter. However, when it comes time to take photos, what I see a lot of people do is just hold the thing out on their desk, with whatever crap is in the background and take a photo under the painting light. Okay, nope, that is not gonna work. Here's a photo of this bust that you're gonna see repeatedly throughout this video. I took a photo of this with a nice backdrop, with a nice camera, but I took it with my painting lights on directly above it. That's what it looks like right now. I want you to remember that. We're gonna come back to it, but look at that. It looks honestly pretty crap, okay? It's overexposed, the light is too bright, none of the proper highlights are showing, and that's because it's being blasted from above by this really powerful top-down light, which is about the worst light you could use to take your photos. When we're painting, we're usually not holding the miniature directly up so its head is toward the light. We're holding it like this at an angle and looking at it in painting. We're turning it face up toward the light. So when we have bright lights from above, even if our lighting scheme is meant to be from above, the fact is those lights are way too bright and way too intense to give us a proper photo. What you need is a few simple things. We'll cover them in detail, but right here, you need even diffuse frontal lighting. You need some kind of neutral backdrop to stop other light and other images from getting in there and getting and, and you're having your camera get out of focus, okay? And that's really about it. You need all that other stuff gone. So let's get into the detail of how exactly we're going to take a good photo. Now that we're not doing it the wrong way anymore, let's take a good photo. So the first and easiest way that you can uh, get to the lighting schema you need, which remember is frontal, soft, diffuse, even again about 4,000 to 5,500K lighting, something like that is fine. That's the area you wanna be in. And the easiest way to get there is honestly just a simple ring light. Um, I use a big one, you can see it here. Uh, this is what I use to also shoot videos. I'm sure you've seen it reflected in my glasses a few times when I turn one direction or the other. Uh, but that's what I use to take photos. Now this is like a very powerful ring light. This one's actually pretty expensive. It's meant for like camera shoots and stuff. You don't need that. There's plenty of very simple, cheap ring lights you can get for 20 bucks or 25 bucks, something like that. And they stand up, they have a holder for your cell phone, jobs are good. And that's another point. You don't need a DSLR camera or something like that to get good photos. Your cell phone can do it, but oftentimes you're going to need to adjust some settings. We'll talk about that a little more in a minute. If you have a DSLR camera, that can aid things, and if so, you'll want to take the, the, the photo 
uh, through the ring light, where it's set directly in front of the miniature. All the other lights are off. So my painting lights, those are all turned off. Now I do have the light above me on, like the one in the ceiling. I don't turn that off. Um, but you could if you're really trying to get a completely neutral, even lighting scheme. I leave that on for just a little bit of diffuse lighting because the ceiling's actually kind of far away. Now, I also use a nice black backdrop. You don't have to have this. This is just a simple thing I ordered off Amazon. You can get a set of these backdrops. They're relatively cheap. I'll drop a link down below so you can pick it up if you want of like the set of all the colors. But really anything neutral will work. A big white piece of paper will work. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. You just want something that's going to be neutral and even. So when the camera is setting on the figure, there's not a lot of other stuff that's bouncing lights, distracting it or messing with its focus. So one even simple background. I shoot, as you can see, right on the desk where I paint. I just move some stuff, turn off the lights, and then drop in the actual uh, backdrop and minis. Now, let's talk a little bit about camera settings. With uh, my camera, I'm shooting with a DSLR. You can see it here. And uh, my lens that I'm using is like a uh, basically a 1.3 foot lens, so I'm about that distance away from the miniature. And you want to make sure that like your lens is appropriate for whatever your your distance you're actually from there. Uh, and I'm I never use like a digital zoom or anything. Always optical if you need to adjust something. But generally you want to get the camera to the right place. And you can see here that I'm shooting an extremely low ISO. Uh, so I'm generally shooting at like ISO 100 or 200 depending on how dark the miniature is. And uh, an f-stop of 2.5. So. That's sort of the settings that I found using this ring light. Now, with this ring light, I'm running it at, uh, that, this ring light is being run at about 38%, generally 30 to 38% is what I run it at, somewhere in that range. And you'll notice right now it's on 3800K, which is actually like quite warm, uh, comparatively, after I just spent a lot of time talking about four to 5000K. But my light above me, uh, the one that's in the ceiling, uh, that's creating sort of a diffuse light over the whole area, is about 6,000K, so we're meeting in the middle there a little bit with a sort of cast light in the room. The point is, is that you'll have to mess around with the settings, depending on the light that's in your room, the natural light, the time of day you're shooting, uh, all those sorts of things, you may need to adjust settings. There's no one golden mean you're ever going to put into your DSLR that's going to give you a perfect photo of every mini, every time. In fact, Certain miniatures will look better on a dark black background. Certain will look better on a white uh, uh, bright background. If you have sort of a neutral gray or something like that, something like what they'd use at a Sears photo studio, those are also fine and generally will handle more cases, um, but it can create a little bit more sort of wonkiness in the background. That visual noise will often look weird. I'm more of a fan of sort of the infinite black and the miniature just being there, but your mileage may vary as to what exactly you think the right answer is. Ultimately, uh, what you're trying to do is make it so when you are taking a picture of your miniature, it's representing the true colors and what you actually painted. The most important steps are having that soft frontal diffuse lighting in that four to five thousand K range, right? And uh, making sure there's not a bunch of other lights up above. So if you're shooting with your cell phone, your cell phone has a lot of like light adjustment. It's gonna to try to balance colors. It's gonna to try to balance light, stuff like that. So if you can turn off all of those automatic settings in your camera, that would be the first thing I would tell you to do. Some cameras will let you, some camera apps will let you actually take control and manually adjust those settings so you can treat it more like a DSLR. If that's happening, and if you don't have those kind of control on your camera phone, it doesn't matter. You can still get good photos. It just means you need to compensate your light a little more for it. So you'll need to work the light, turn it either a little colder or a little warmer, a little brighter, a little dimmer to find where exactly your cell phone camera is going to be the most happy in its sort of manual adjustments it's making where it's doing the least work and giving you a closer image to what's there in reality. So it may just take a little bit. You either have to mess with the camera settings or the lighting. You'll need to balance the two out. But there's no reason a simple $20 ring light and your cell phone camera, if that's your primary light you're shooting from, with a simple white piece of paper behind you, can't give you awesome looking photos of your minis. 
Speaking of minis, here's how she came out, how she actually looks. So here's what she looks like uh, with the proper photos set up as I've described it. Now, just for uh, our own sake here, here's the original picture. I'll bring it back to your mind because you might not remember. Uh, so here they are compared. As you can see, it's quite a difference. Again, that summary, soft, frontal, diffuse lighting, four to 5,000 K. If you've got a cell phone, turn off the automatic adjustments and stuff like that, take control. Uh, you want a low ISO, uh, relatively low f-stop, and you want a decently bright light out of that ring light. Um, let the light do the work. Don't make the camera try to compensate. If you can't, then have the cell phone and you know turn the light down or up warmer or colder as would be appropriate. That's really all you need. Now, if you don't want to buy a ring light, but you have some nice painting lights, you can also use those if they're fully adjustable. One final note is if you have fully adjustable painting lights, take them from above the miniature and move them to in front of the miniature. You can still very much get to a decent place if you've got some like desk lamps or something like that, but you can readjust them to be positioned front, front on, and they're diffuse. You have a cover over them, something like that. You may need to turn them down if they are adjustable so they're not quite as blasting as much light, but you can certainly do that as well. So you don't even need to buy separate gear as long as your existing lights are adjustable in some way to where you can move the light to the front face on directly hitting the miniature. With that, that brings us to a close. I hope this helps you take good photos. If you've got more questions about taking photos of your minis that I didn't answer, drop those down in the comments below. I will absolutely do my best to answer everyone I can. I always read and answer every question asked. If you want to support the channel, lots of ways you can do so. If you're going to pick something up, everything I mentioned in the video is linked down below. So you can find Amazon links for that stuff. You can pick up that or any of your hobby supplies through the affiliate links. Never cost you anything extra and actually might often save you some money. Uh, in any event though, that gives a little kickback and helps support the channel. If you do want to take the next step on your miniature painting journey, our Patreon is down there also. It's focused on review and feedback. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.